and the outdated tactics get left behind. The next time we stop, marketers look around when your brain keeps going down. It's the Jim and Ann Show, the Jim and Ann Show, the Jim and Ann Show today. So this is Jim. <laughs> I'm Jim. That's a yeah. <laughs> I'm Anne. <laughs> and it's a fun question for Jim. What is the question, Anne? So the question is, should I disavow links from high authority websites? Like, let's say that a huge website, you have a backlink from it, and you are asking yourself, is this something to disavow? And I hope the gym has an answer to that. Sure. Actually, I do. I could answer that. In fact, there was, there was an article um, on Search Engine Journal from Adam Reamer recently that, that covered this. Um, and Adam, Adam's a really smart guy as well. But um, let me take it a little bit further. So, you know, when you talk about domain authority, I guess the first question, you know, any DA is a made up number from someplace, you know, uh, and when you, I guess when you first say a high domain authority, I'd be like, you know, who's domain authority? Moz, Majestic, Ahrefs, SEMrush, Bob the neighbor, <laughs> like who's, who's saying it's a high domain authority? Um, I guess that'd be kind of the other thing. And a lot of people, when they are looking at doing a disavow or analyzing their links, they're like, you know, and I've seen this done. You know, I, I remember someone came to me and said, you know, we disavowed everything lower than a 20 and figured that must be bad. And we'll keep everything with a domain authority higher than 20. That must be good. And it's surprising how many people actually do that. And it's like, you hear about it, you're like, oh, no. Um, you're using these artificial numbers and thinking anything lower than a certain number is bad and anything higher than a certain number is good. So um, we don't even look at domain authority. Uh, we don't look at anyone's. It's not even part of our anything we look at. Um, so I guess... You know, I guess it comes to a broader question, whether it's a high domain, you know, I guess you could ask the opposite question. Should I disavow low domain authority sites? And, you know, the answer to, to each of those, I don't want to say is it depends, but, you know, there's certain things I guess you'd have to look at, you know, how did that link come to you? If you didn't ask for it and it magically came and it looks good and it looks real and natural, I don't care. I don't care who linked to you. I'd be like, that's good. You know, if your neighbor Bob said, you know, I was at my neighbor's house and saw he sells widgets and you need widgets, check out his widgets. And he links to you and he's got a domain authority of zero. You know, I'd be like, that's a good link. You know, like it's natural. He decided to link to you. You know, if, if Bob the blogger came across your blue widget site and he's like, ah, I love these blue widgets or something and he writes about it and links to it and you didn't ask him and it just naturally came, that's a great link. I don't care what the domain authority is. So I guess really the whole question is why did the link get there? If links went there naturally, came to you naturally, I wouldn't worry about any of it, you know, unless you're like seeing porn links or something. Um, but you know, 99% of the time, if a link comes into you and it was naturally placed, to me, it's good. So what are the ones that you know, are unnaturally placed that you might want to disavow? Well, I guess the first question would be is, did you buy the link? And if you're like, well, yeah, <laughs> well, you know, it's chances are Google knows about it and it's not counting. So I guess that's the first thing I'd say, you know, I, I know lots of high domain authority sites that sell links. You know, you get, if you're on LinkedIn, you know, or get email or something like I get messages all the time and it's a list of, you know, we got these high domain authority sites you can get links from. And there's some major sites. I don't want to call them out here now in public, but a lot of SEOs know them. You know, there's major sites that sell links. They've been called out a million times. Google's already said, you know, we, we know about these sites and those sites don't pass PageRank. 
So chances are like if you're buying a link from a big well-known site and you're like, ah, you know, that, that, that's great. You know, good, good for traffic. You know, if it's something that you think is going to send visitors to your site be relevant, great. You know, you really should tell them to no follow the link. Um, but you know, if you have exact matching, I, I guess a lot of the high sites, Google already knows. about. And so if you bought a link, you know, even on this high domain authority, Google probably knows about it. And it's probably a signal to Google that, you know, hey, you might be buying links. You know, as a link analyzer, I can instantly tell if you're buying links. 99.9% .9 of the times by looking at the page and by looking at the words you use to link to your site. You know, if the link to your site is cheap car insurance, you bought that. No one naturally linked to your site with cheap car insurance. You know, 100%. You know, I can look over someone's backlink profiles, look at their anchor text and tell you right off the rip if they're buying links, you know? You know, naturally you should have anchor text with all sorts of different phrases. That's what naturally happens. You know, people that are buying links are often going to a broker and be like, how do you hold a bunch of blog links, you know, and with these phrases. And, um, but where was I? I? I wouldn't look at domain authority. So then you say, well, you know, high domain authority, low domain authority, whatever, you know, in my eyes, if it naturally came there, it's good. If you did something to get that link, you know, by going to a, a broker or, you know, a guest blog post network or something that can be mapped, then I might be like, yeah, you know, I don't care if it's high domain or low domain authority. You know, I, I think we talked in one of our other videos about our, our link mapping tool and, you know, all the people that write to us and say, we have links for sale. We always write back and say, send us your list. <laughs> and then we take those lists, put it into our link seller database. You know, here's, you know, and there's tons of them in there. Like almost every day I get an email from someone who will buy some links. Yeah, send me over a list. And sometimes they're like, we can't send you over our whole spreadsheet. You know, tell us the kind of site you have. Well, I got a, a finance site and I have an education site that covers everything. I can get you know, links from anywhere. I try and get their big list. They give us the list. We put it into our tool. Our tool spiders those sites, looks for common people that they're linking out to. So now we know all the people buying those links. And then we take those sites that are buying and look at their common backlinks to try and find what's the rest of that network that they all bought from. <laughs> and so we have, you know, known paid links, suspected paid links. Um, and I think that's the thing that, you know, if you're thinking about doing a disavow, normally the reason, you know, Google should be smart enough to catch stuff so you don't have to do a disavow. But the only time you're really going to get in trouble usually with Google as far as getting a, a penalty for unnatural backlinks is that you have artificial backlinks. <laughs> you went to a network and bought a whole bunch and Google mapped it, you know, just like our tools do. Our tools can map it. Um, and we, you know, we know all the sellers, we know all the suspected sellers, we know all the sites and the sellers list and we map it all out. And, you know, we, we have three and a half programmers and Google has thousands. So, you know, Google's probably a million times better than us, but, you know, we're pretty darn good. I could pull up someone's links and instantly be like, oh, you're buying links from, you know, Bob, or you're buying links from this company. You know, I could instantly identify it. How'd you know? That was years ago. Or oh, maybe there was an SEO we hired, and, you know, and it's like, I can find all your paid links and disavow those. You know, do you need to do a disavow in theory? No. Most of the time you don't. 90% of the time, I'd say you don't have to do a disavow. Google's going to be just fine with picking up stuff. What is the 10%? The 10% is the sites that have been doing stuff that can get them penalized, like artificial link building. Um, those are the ones, you know, I... You know, we we have companies that come to us that have been penalized and we're like, you know, hey, we've been penalized and you can go in and look at the anchor text, look at the stuff. And it's always 99% of the times it's people that have bought a whole bunch of blog links. They went to a broker and they're like, we're a finance site. And the broker says, we have thousands of finance sites in our networks. And you're like, great, give me finance links. And all that stuff can be mapped. So that's the stuff that I would disavow. Domain authority wouldn't even look at it. When when I do my disavow, and I I'm guessing I've done more disavows than anyone like in the entire world, literally. I, 
I don't know, but that's my guess. I've done a lot of them. And in my tool that I use, our own tool, you know, we're not, I'm not, none of my categories are domain authority or page authority. Um, you know, there, you know, is the site, is the page ranking, is the site ranking, um, what's the traffic to the site, what's the say, all sorts of things, but none of it is what's the domain authority. And kind of what I look at is if it's natural, that's great. I'll take every natural link that comes in. You know, I don't even care a ton about relevance. You know, if my neighbor decides to link to my widget site and my neighbor sells clocks, but he's like, hey, my neighbor sells widgets. And if you want a widget, you should get one. Like, I'll take it. Yeah, the site's not relevant. The site's about clocks, but it's a natural link. Sure, it's not worth as much as if my neighbor had widgets, but I'll take the link from the clock site. Yeah, it's natural. I know it's not going to count as much, but it's not going to hurt me. It's not going to hurt me because it's natural and my neighbor's natural. And maybe my neighbor only has five links to his site. So, you know, his domain authority is zero, but the five links that go to his site are natural. I'll take it. And, you know, there could be some big site that, you know, has thousands of backlinks and they're selling to everyone in the world and they're on every single link seller network. Like often, you know, the, sell the people that sell links you know, they don't have their own database, very few, unless they're doing like private blog networks or whatever. But most of them are people that they've written to a million bloggers and everyone that says yes, they put it into their spreadsheet. And, you know, blogger Joe said yes to this guy. He said yes to everyone else too. So he's in every link seller network. And blogger Joe, he writes some real stuff every now and then, you know, you get real stuff. And and then someone, you know, slips them a hundred and suddenly there's a post about cheap car insurance, you know, and he writes some real stuff and then someone slips him something and he's writing about payday loans, you know, <laughs> it's like, but that site is on every single link seller list. And if you map out the, yeah, it's just, you know, I guess I look at is did the link get there naturally um, or was it artificial? And, you know, the vast majority of sites, everything came in natural. Of course, you're going to have some scraper junk stuff. But, you know, I do believe Google's smart enough to catch almost all that. They're not going to penalize you for that. They're going to penalize you for buying links. You know, that's what they're going to penalize you for. So, yes, if you've been buying links or if you're a big company and you've had lots of SEOs or you don't know what everyone has done in the past, it might be good to look at your backlinks. Chances are Google's just going to ignore those unless they're like, you know, you've gone a little overboard, Bob, or, you know, you, you tripped something in our algorithm that says we're going to look at it and give you the manual penalty. And, you know, it might have been stuff you did 10 years ago, and maybe it hasn't tripped any filter yet, or maybe it's tripped a filter that it's not counting. And then one day it trips a filter that says, and you got a manual. <laughs> and you're like, I haven't done anything, you know, in years. And it's like, yeah, but that stuff you did years ago is still there. So that's that's how I look at links. So I think the main takeaway here is don't look at DA. I mean, the first main takeaway here, you might not, <coughs> you do not need disavow. So think about that first before doing anything. Like, do you really need to disavow anything? And the second yeah. takeaway is DA is not the metric to use when disallowing anything. We've we've had a lot of people, unfortunately, that have come to us um, wanting me to analyze their links for a disavow. And you know, I think we've had a big discount on our price for analyzing links, but there's been a handful recently where it's been like, you don't need to disavow, or I did your link analysis and there's only 10 links that I disavowed and that's not gonna affect anything one way or another. You know, feel free to have your money back or take credit or something, but that's that's been happening more now than it was in the past where I'm looking at sites and being like, you really don't need it, you know, have, have a coupon for our service or something. I hope the clients are all right. Like, I don't wanna fix what's not broken, you know, but, um, sometimes that happens where I go in and I look at the backlinks and it's like, you yeah, know, there's no need to do anything here. And most of the time it's not, but, but, you know, and I, I've gone back to this a few times, you know, that, that billion dollar company that came to us and said, you know, we have a penalty and, you know, they wanted me to analyze their links to do a disavow. You know, I'm, I'm sure that it, maybe at one point someone at that billion dollar company heard, 
don't worry about links. Google will just ignore them if they have an issue with them. And, you know, and then one day they're penalized, <laughs> you know, like if Google's so good at analyzing links, I mean, why do they have manual penalties? <laughs> you know, and tell people don't worry about doing the disavow. Well, the billion dollar company got a manual penalty. They should have worried about doing a disavow. I'm sure they wish they looked at their links before that happened. And I think we just talked about that last week that do, people do still get manual penalties. And then they wait for months to hear yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. So like, this problem, for some reason, still exists, even though Google insists on being very good at analyzing and discounting anything they don't like. Yeah, I think as of a week ago, there were potential reports of it being three or four months out yep. for people to review your reconsideration request. That would stink, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, I guess you know it wouldn't hurt to spend a little bit of money to have someone analyze your backlinks, because <laughs> if you do get penalized, like I feel bad. Like I think it was I think Glenn Gabe maybe posted about someone that had submitted a reconsideration request in early October and still hadn't been addressed by Google. And Danny Sullivan said like a week or so ago that, yeah, there's a little bit of a backlog. <laughs> it's like, well, we know we're going at least back to, I think the one that Glenn submitted, I think it was Glenn, it was like October 7th. And it's like, yeah, it's a little bit of a backlog. Like it would suck to be in that position. Look around when your brain keeps going down.